it's amazing how how good and how fast these bikes really were back in the 70s. With the uh, four-cylinder engine, it pulled close to 80 horsepower on a dyno. It was good for over 125 miles an hour. Super reliable, no vibration, and only oil. Classic antique Honda. Hi, this is Ken Kaplan from the New England Motorcycle Museum, and I just got back from a longer than usual test ride on this absolutely awesome 1978 Honda CB750F and maxed out with the black max, black and, black and gold livery here. Um, also, these is a quarter fairing and it's a flashback to 1978. What a fantastic bike. The bike's all original, even the exhaust. Uh, the only items that aren't original are the paint job and the handlebars, to my knowledge. Fantastic bike, and it Makes it clear to me why Honda, uh, almost Honda and Yamaha and Kawasaki almost put Harley out of business in '78 when AMF was having problems. These bikes are so good. Almost 50 years later, it's still a kick-ass machine. Handles, rides, runs great. Come take a ride with me. And a flashback to 1978. Electric start. Turns like a kitten. Nice, quiet, original exhaust. Good luck finding your other one with an original exhaust like this. Not that many out there. Has a nice sound to it too. The EPA rules weren't that good back then. Everything works beautifully on it. Beep, beep. Horn, all the turn signals, the lights. two-page work order and a two-page parts list. We put just about $4,000 into the resurrection and restoration of the bike. Um, I've got a current registration for it. Or, excuse me, uh, yeah, uh, registration until 2019, actually. So, uh, fantastic, no excuses bike, ready for the summer, ready to ride. Get over how fast and smooth this bike is. The brakes, the clutch, the transmission, pulls like a freight train. Super smooth. Um, this bike, the carbs were, were just rebuilt on this bike, and, I, and they weren't just cleaned by an amateur. They were completely dismantled. Over 180 pieces on the table, laid out, um, and every piece in it carefully cleaned, examined, and replaced or reinstalled properly, and then tuned and synchronized to perfection. So I'll go over the work order again. It's a two-page work order. Pretty nice ride, huh? It's a 78. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's a fantastic bike. Um, it does have the, the low super bike bars in black to match the bike, which I love. The gauges are nice and clear. The mirrors are like brand new. The grips are like brand new. The levers are perfectly straight. Come on in. I'll read the work order for you. Um, you know, leave it that out. Uh, no, yeah, flip the passenger pegs down. I'll ride it up with you. Four. Uh, definitely plenty of power. Take your girlfriend to the beach. Um, ride double up. Not much you can't do. You can ride this bike cross country. I wouldn't hesitate to ride this thing cross country tomorrow. Fly out here, grab it, and ride home if you're from California. Adventure of a lifetime. These are just bulletproof, reliable. One of the best classic antique motorcycle investments you can possibly make. The 69 Honda 750s are untouchable now, even at 20,000 and up. The set we just sold the 1970 for 12,700, and then the mid 70s, uh, we sold a couple 79s in the 5,500 dollar range. Um, I would put the value of this bike right here somewhere between five, five and 75, depending on the condition of the bike. 
like, again, I've got a work order of $4,000 when the services belong to it, so add on to that the cost of a clean 750, you can see how you can easily drop 7,000 or more into uh, doing one yourself. This one needs nothing. It's 100% ready to rumble. Uh, mechanically, it's, it's excellent and ready to go. So, bring her in. Just got off the bike after a nice ride. Uh, like I said, longer than my average test ride, this thing's a joy to ride. It only has 23,000 miles on it. Uh, the engine's in perfect condition. Mechanically, front to back, it's excellent. Uh, cosmetically, we did not put a new paint job on it. This is the paint job it came in on, so if you wanted to put your own touch on it, put a custom paint job on it, doll it up a little bit, but all the mechanical work's done. Again, there's a two-page work order here. I've got the uh, uh, registration, which is current until, uh, let's see, uh, expires in June of 2018. Connecticut's a non-title state, and so is in Rhode Island, so that uh, you only get a registration. They don't do titles for, for antiques anymore, uh, but you do get the previous registration. Uh, the bike has, we put, like I said, we put over 31 hours of labor into the bike and uh, I'll go over the two page work order we had and of course parts. So between parts and labor plus the new tires, there's uh, it was $3,518.28 on the work order plus the tires. So the tires mounted, the Avon tires with labor mounted was another 400, so just under $4,000 invested in the restoration of the, of the bike. and. Uh, we, we uh, I just felt it was worth doing because the, the 750s are getting so rare. It's hard to find a good, clean one that's sorted out like this one is. First thing we did is a full inspection, inspection and evaluation of the bike. Did some research on parts that were needed, and we did a compression test. The compression, after adjusting the valves uh, to a .002 on the intake and .003 on the exhaust, was a perfect 150 PSI across the board, just like the day it came out of the factory. Uh, we adjusted the cam chain tensioner, we changed the engine oil and the filter, replaced the filter o-rings and the drain washers, did a full ignition system service, tested the primary and secondary resistance on both coils, which just tested up perfect. The plug cap resistance didn't test out perfectly, so we put four brand new spark plug caps and four brand new spark plugs in, in addition uh, to uh, removing the timing advantage to clean, inspect, lubricate, and reassemble and install the timing advancer. We also cleaned the points in the point cam felt, re-oiled the felt, set the point tap gap and the timing, and basically went through the whole electronic system on the bike, top to bottom, front to back, all the lights, everything works perfectly. We did a full fuel system service. By that, I mean the gas tank was taken off, cleaned with Metal Rescue, the petcock was removed and dismantled, uh, found to be defective, so we put a brand new reproduction petcock on, brand new fuel lines, the uh, petcock uh, post that it screws onto needed to be serviced. We had to send that out to have it welded twice before it was right. So two trips to the welding shop for the, for the tank petcock to get that perfect. Now it's perfectly gas tight and the tank's in great shape. It's a nice straight tank. Um, again, the paint has uh, got a couple chips in it. If you want it, it looks great the way it is, but if you want to repaint it, a couple little dings in it, one right here, uh, that's barely noticeable on the camera. But if you look closely, there's a couple dings on the tank. Very easy to have a body shop straighten that out, put a new paint job on it if you wanted to. But we didn't want to put 10 grand into the restoration and have to sell it, sell it for too much. So we drew the line at four grand and that's where we're at right now. So the fuel system, we pulled the tank off again, did what, what I said we did to it. And then uh, we got to the carburetors, which were removed. The air box was removed, a brand new, it was cleaned, serviced, and a brand new air filter was installed. The carbs were completely dismantled. Every, the, the bank of carbs was separated, all four carbs individually dismantled into over 100 pieces on the bench. Anything that needed to be replaced was replaced. Uh, complete disassembly and separation of the rack. We cleaned and adjusted the carbs, replaced all the O-rings with an OEM Honda kit, replaced the flow valves. Uh, then we pressure lubricated the throttle cables, cleaned the throttle pipe in the housing and the handlebars, adjusted the throttle cable free play, adjusted the choke cable free play, and then did a bench synchronizer of the throttle slides. And then we filled it with fuel, confirmed the accelerator pump operation on the carburetors was perfect put everything back together, started the car, and then synchronized the car burners. So, full professional restoration, not just a car clean, it was a restoration of the carbs to as good as new mechanical condition, which is not something the average mechanic, home mechanic is gonna be able to do. Full electrical system, brand new UASA battery was installed. We um, put a new, over, confirmed the overflow hose is clear so there's no acid issues on the bike. Clean the positive and negative cable terminals. Um, we cut out and replaced both sides of the six-pin connector terminals for the rectifier. 
cut out and replace both sides of the 8-pin connector terminals for this data and the neutral light switch. And this is something that like an average guy probably not going to be able to do either. Our, our lead mechanic, just to give you a heads up, the lead mechanic that works here, Mark Wilson that, that restored this bike, owned a Honda, antique Honda only restoration shop for several years. And he's been restoring vintage Hondas for since they became vintage Hondas over 20 years. So um, it was worked on by the best in the business and that is very evident when you ride the bike. It carburetes flawlessly, it runs flawlessly. And he's a, he's a, he's a, a stickler for details, so little things like these electrical connectors were taken care of properly. He also confirmed the proper operation of the ignition switch, the kill switch, the horn, the turn signals, the high-low switch. Uh, he cut out and replaced the harness side six-pin connector and terminals for the fuse block, so the whole wiring system was completely sorted out with new connectors wherever it was necessary. Also, pressure removed the clutch cable, adjusted the clutch release at the clutch cover, adjusted the cable free play. Also replaced a brand new drive chain, show them the drive chain, and, it, and then adjusted the, the chain slack. So in addition to the brand new Avon tires, it's got a brand new drive chain. Replaced both hand grips with OEM style original grips, both mirrors with replicas of the original, so the grips and mirrors with the original style. Um, the brakes were completely rebuilt, flush, filled, bleed the front brake fluid, checked for the brake diag, inspected the pads and rotor, removed and replaced the rear brake master cylinder and caliper to disassemble. Clean and rebuild with brand new pistons and seals on the calipers. Um, fill and bled, bled the brake fluid, inspected the pads and rotors, everything's 100%. Replace the rear brake light switch spring and adjust the sensitivity. Then test, disassemble and clean the front brake light switch at the master cylinder so the brake light switches, front and rear brake both work perfectly. That's a two page work order, folks. I know not everything we did to the bike is on there, there's other things we've done, but um, that, that's it, and there's a two page parts order. I'll read it to you quickly. Brand new Uwasa battery, brand new NGK spark plugs, new spark plug caps uh, times four, new oil filter with new O-rings, new drain washer at the bottom where you drain. That's something most people forget to do, they don't put a new drain washer on there, and they end up stripping out their, their, their plug. Brand new Maxima premium, uh, premium four, 20 weight, 50 weight oil, uh, brand new, k &L piston kit for the rear caliper, brand new rear caliper rebuild kit, new master cylinder rebuild kit, new banjo bolt brush washers, new Bellray DOT4 brake fluid, brand new high flow air filter, which is an original equipment replacement, uh, brand new uh, reproduction fuel pet cock assembly, that's brand new, OEM fuel cap gasket on the top here, brand new gasket for the fuel cap, OEM carb gasket set, brand new accelerator pump rebuild kit, that's something the average guy's not going to even know how to do it. Accelerator re re pump was rebuilt and the carbs were completely rebuilt so the fuel system's essentially like I said it's good better than it. Brand new left mirror, right mirror, brand new air box, special nut and bolt, a brand new handlebar grips, uh, brand new EK630 by 88 link drive chain and then one two three four five six multiple pin female connectors for a total of let's see 16 32 different electrical connections were placed on the motorcycle. Again uh, Conservative, conservative number, 31 hours of service put into the bike. Uh, the bike's been here since last year. We did a little bit of time order parts. This is a two page parts list. Um, good luck bringing your bike to another shop and asking them to do it and thinking you're going to walk out with less than a $4,000 bill because you're not going to, or they're going to cut corners. No corners were cut. And like I said, cosmetically, the bike's not perfect. It does have a, a, you know some chips in the paint, a little ding in the front fender. Um, the pipes are the original pipes, which I think is fantastic. Uh, there's a little bit of a uh, little bit of rust, like at the bottom. If you look at the pipes, when I say rust, surface rust, there's no rust through holes, which is remarkable for the original. Um, almost well, it's a '78, so it's a 40-year-old exhaust system. Okay, I don't see any rust holes all the way through. The original center stands intact. The pegs are in good condition. The the brake lever it has a Kickstarter too, which is something you don't see on the new bikes. So if you really want to wow your, your friends on their new bikes, pull up and kickstart your 40-year-old antique Honda 750 and then smoke them. Things fast. So um, again, the tires uh, have less than 20 miles on them. They still have the nubs on them. They're brand new, front and rear. Um, that's about it. I mean, just a fantastic bike. Obviously, I'm excited about it. I love vintage Hondas. I believe it's the most reliable engine made in a vintage motorcycle today. And, and the reason why Harley and, if, and Triumph went at, went, almost went out of business uh, in that era, these bikes were so damn good, you'd have to be an idiot not to want them. So, uh, fantastic investment quality classic that's just been sorted out by the best in the business. And I, I test ride 
look at my YouTube channel, 1,300 motorcycles in the last four years. So um, I know what I'm talking about. This is a really smooth running bike, and I'm, I'm sure you'll agree if, you, if you're the lucky guy who ends up with it. So ready for a summer of fun. Uh, all the hard work's been done. If you want to doll it up, change the paint job, paint the candy apple red, whatever you want to do, put a quarter fairing on it. Yeah, if you want to put a Kirker on it, go ahead. Um, this has original pipe on it. It's a fantastic bike. Ship it anywhere in the world uh, for you. 750 to the UK or anywhere, pretty much anywhere in Europe for 750. Anywhere on the West Coast for about 600. All the way to Florida for four. Or come pick it up yourself and tour the museum here. Uh, first big event we're having is April 21st. We're having a brew fest. 20 microbreweries are going to be here. Um, 10 food vendors, band, lots of bikes, lots of booze, lots of babes, lots of beer. So, cool event here at the New England Motorcycle Museum. So I'm going to take this baby for one last ride, and then uh, she's going to be sold to the high bid. Okay, do you have uh, anything that I left out that you want to mention about the bike or about? I think, I think that's everything, Ken. All right, so again, I'm going to go the bike. I wish I could keep it. Fantastic running machine. Good luck, Clinton. Big on the bike. God bless America.